their names will not receive the light of day. We don't even know the exact count. We just know that there are scores upon scores upon scores of predominantly young men between the ages of 18 and 35 who have been locked up, imprisoned in very brutal circumstances in pre-prison confinement throughout the United States and then after going to trial and having some semblance of a trial these young men, most of whom are tried for crimes that the government admits are aspirational. If what the government says about these men is true, it is aspiration. They aspire to do X, Y, and Z, but it was never done. And at the end of the day, when they are tried and convicted in what often masquerades as trials, they received the kinds of sentences that even convicted murderers in the, in the United States of America do not receive. This is what masquerades as justice. And in many of these cases, in many of these cases involving these young men, they are also inserted within the mix. Not just government informants, but agents provocateurs who actually are inserted among these young men to encourage them and to incite them to begin speaking a certain way. And so we're here to talk about them and we're also here, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about a very important resolution that was passed in Albany, New York just a few weeks ago. A resolution that we are hoping will be passed in jurisdictions around this potentially great but deeply disturbed nation called America. A resolution that calls on the government to revisit all of the cases of preemptive prosecutions involving these Muslims from coast to coast. And so we have a lot on our plate in a little bit of time. The first two speakers that we want to bring before you is our friend Lynn, and Dominic Calcellaro, who is the member of the Albany Common Council, whose spirit Project Salam is Lynn Stewart, who sits in jail right behind us. We in the black community call her our John Brown. And I say to you, she is still active because she supports human rights and she understands that this government in charge will destroy anyone. Dr. Siddiqui, Lynn Stewart, anyone in their path of money. As a matter of fact, they will destroy the earth itself. Witness the gulf. They will destroy the air we breathe. Witness where we stand. And our job is to stop them. Stop them from destroying lives. Stop them from attacking the land we live on. And stop them from destroying the idea of justice and freedom that we never achieved in America. So all of us, together, immigrants all, must join the struggle to make America what it pretended to be. Lynn Stewart will be in that struggle. I will be in the struggle. The people you see around here will be in the struggle. And I hope you too will be in the struggle to make America live up to the false promise that it started out to be. Thank you. trial is. What courtroom is that person being sentenced? Those of us who are in the economic and social justice movement also stand with you demanding freedom of people like Dr. Siddiqui and Lynn Stewart who in the final analysis are only being persecuted because they're either Muslim or because they're defending people's human rights. 
We know who the real terrorist is. You all know. But there's another hypocrisy going on that those of us in the social justice movement are very keen on. Not only do they use this broad brush of quote unquote terrorism as a blanket excuse to persecute Muslims and anybody else they want for whatever reason they want. They also use it to change the subject. I think Sarah was talking about this when she talked about how the media did not cover all of these immigrants coming together to demand their rights last Saturday, but instead were fixated on whatever the hell that was, pardon my language, in Times Square. Whatever. Whatever. We say the real terrorism is when you get laid off and because of that you lose your house or your apartment and you can't feed your family. That's the real terrorism. Right on. Right on. When you don't have food, when children go starving and senior citizens' centers are closed, which is where they go for their primary meal of the day. What about that kind of terrorism? All right. They give us their version of terrorism to change the subject. Right well, on. let's change the subject back okay. and talk about economic terrorism. Okay. It's why some of us are going to be in Washington, D.C. this Saturday, May 8th, to demand a jobs program. It is nothing less than terror that the overwhelming majority of African-American young people between the ages of 17 and 30 do not have jobs and may never have a job. That's not only terrorism, that's genocide. Right on. That's why we're going to be demanding a jobs program for young people and all generations. And I hope that if you're free Saturday, you'll join us. Free Dr. Sadaki. Free Dr. Sadiki. Free Dr. Sadiki. Free Dr. Sadiki. Free all political prisoners. Free all political prisoners. Free Lynn Stewart now. Free Lynn Stewart now. Power to the people. Never give up. Thank you, Larry Holmes. The next speaker, it's my honor to introduce today, is again someone who has been every rally, every protest, finding a way again and again to speak out, particularly knowing that Muslims, and especially those in the Pakistani community, are so targeted and demonized. I want to introduce our next speaker, Comrade Shaheed, from the Pakistan USA Freedom Forum. Comrade Shaheed. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It's a love and it's honor to see a Muslim and a human who believe the justice, which is the basis of Islam. The Prophet Muhammad said, if anybody do the crime, even my daughter did something wrong, she's going to be treated like as the citizens. And that's what we asking this court over here. You never did the justice. You ask me if you want to come to the court of the Dr. Rafia Siddiqui, show me your ID. They're going to write down my name and my address, and then I have to sign. Pakistan, USA, Freedom Forum, we protested because this is against the Constitution and this is against the so-called courts, open courts. And we ask every organization in this country and in the world, please help us and tell the world, we will not call this is open court when you have to give your ID and your name. This not happen in this country, it's not going to happen in this country, and we as a migrant, and we as a Muslim, we will stand for the open court. There will be no secret papers. There will be no national security against the human security. There will be nothing more than the open justice system in this country. And I'm asking my sisters and brothers, Muslim sisters, which have the Surah Nisa for them. It's a great honor to the Muslim and mothers. That's why the God recognizes you. 
please tell your other sisters as a muslim it's a very hard time in this country